Thank you, thank you, Yarek. Thank you, everyone, to see my presentation. This is Zibo, and today I'm going to talk about collection skeletons, which provides a, a new way to interact with data collections, uh, also known as data structures. So, um, as a programmer, every day when we are programming, we need to know how how to store our data in a proper data structures. But there are several choices of data structures. There are arrays, there are stacks, there are vectors. So how to pick a appropriate data structure has always been a um, not easy problem. Um, let, ha let us stick with a list, which is uh, ADT. Uh, but there are still many implementations of a list. For example, if we are programming with C++, there are lists from standard library, there are lists from boost library, there are lists from some third-party libraries. So how to choose uh, an optimal one? It can be still very hard to choose a data structure from an existing hierarchy of a, a data structure library, for example, from Scala, uh, Scala collection library or Java collection library. When I was a new programmer to Java, I once questioned why would a stack be a vector or a list? But as we know, this uh, has been an implementation uh, way of Java, but it's uh, still sometimes um, not easy to handle. Let, let us consider another simple example. Uh, for example, we'd like to write a piece of code consisting of a loop traversing over a data collection of all integers. And uh, for each iteration, we would like to increase the element value by one. So the question is, what data collection should we choose? As programmers, we all know we should choose a list or a vector. But let's uh, consider this simple example from another angle. So let's go back to the problem domain. I suggest we would like to store, store the data into a collection which should be terrible because we, we would like to increase the value one by one. And as the problem domain suggests, the elements in the data collection should be of well ordered. And it also allows duplication in the data collection. It it's also should allow variable length of the data collection. So this time we write down uh, these properties in this interface of the data collection. And this is an alternative way to interact with data collection. So next I'm going to uh, introduce um, how we implement the collection skeletons. So we have developed uh, collection skeletons which provide a novel declarative approach for data collections. We have exposed several uh, properties and identified a set of useful uh, semantic and interface properties. And we have uh, evaluated our prototype library against several benchmark programs and uh, the experimental results uh, is quite good. Uh, for properties, we have proposed uh, eight groups of properties. They are semantic properties and interface properties and non-functional properties which, has, which haven't been included at this stage. Semantic properties specify the behavior of the collections and the methods with which collections are accessed or modified. For example, uh, uniqueness it defines if uh, the insert function of a set to, to disallow the duplication of the elementaries in a data collection. 
And for interface properties, it always relates to certain functionalities which usually provide it in form of interface methods. So there are five, uh, um, five groups of interface properties at this stage. There are also some properties that are of hybrid nature, which means they are of semantic and of interface at the same time. So we call them hybrid properties or uh, semantic and interface properties. Uh, this is the very simple interface of the programming model. Uh, we have implemented the prototype library based on C++ templates beta programming. So when the users are going to working with the library, they only need to declare the elementary data type as a type parameter t, and p1 to pn are the requested properties as mentioned before, and there are also some optional uh, type parameters such as the comparator to define the order uh, if the user needs to declare. We have also proposed a multi-stage dependent matching algorithm to decide which uh, declaration should be mapped to certain concrete data structure implementation. And uh, this kind of abstraction has provided an opportunity to shield the parallelization from the end user, just like it shields the implementational details of the con concrete data structure from the end users. So we have proposed two ways of the parallelization shielding. They, they are implicit parallelism and ex explicit parallelism. For implicit parallelism, the parallelization is transparent to the is fully transparent to the end users. They are hidden in the collection access functions or they are hidden in the concrete data structures implementations. For explicit parallelism, they are exposed to the programmers and the programmers can use them at their will. So for the explicit parallelism, we have integrated uh, parallel algorithmic skeletons with our collection skeletons. So the programmers can use them. So here's an overview of the implicit parallelism. Um, the library can decide a concurrent data structure. For example, the, some data structures from one TPB provided by Intel as the concrete data structures if certain conditions met or if the users apply certain interface methods uh, with the data collection, for example, a find or a sort function, um, if there are some match, the library can return the implementation, or can return the parallelized implementation to increase the performance. For implicit parallelism, as I mentioned before, they are mainly uh, implemented based on the algorithmic skeletons. So we have provided uh, parallelized versions of map, reduce, and filter. And we have also provided task-based uh, skeletons, such as divide and conquer. We have also provided stencil as another algorithmic skeleton. And um, with the parallelization shielding policy, we want to know something more. For example, we would like to know if uh, certain um, algorithmic skeleton can be applied to certain data collection. For example, we want to know if for data collection, can it really be mapped Let's say the we call it can is it mappable, and is it really parallelized mappable? So we pr proposed to do a pre-compile type check um, based on the properties. So for for example, for a map, 
the necessary pro properties for a MAMP should be iterable and they should have iter and next functions. But if we would like to do a parallel MAMP, we, we need the random accessible to access the elements in a data collection randomly. And there are um, some more checks for filter and reduce and other skeletons. So um, today I'm here to put some open questions so we can discuss, for example, what properties can be automatically inferred from source code and what properties can be inferred for the resulting collection because sometimes we would like to know the return type of a certain function and what are the rules of the collections because currently there are no concrete rules for, for the collections because it's still a prototype library. And can we check properties at compile time or even at runtime for C++? And is our set of properties complete? No, um, obviously no at this stage. <laughs> so um, we have done some evaluation based on some benchmarks. They are from uh, some micro benchmarks and some legacy benchmarks such as Odin benchmarks, Rodinia benchmarks, and Pabolio benchmarks. We have manually rewritten the legacy C code from those benchmarks and replaced them with our declarative way of data collections. Uh, besides, we didn't do other code rewriting nor optimization. And we have in implemented the benchmarks on three different target platforms. So here's Here's the experimental results for the overhead. We can see the overhead is uh, very small. And here's the experiment here are the experimental results for the speed up for sequential settings. And we can see most of the benchmarks have seen the performance improvement, which suggests that by replacing only the data structure, maybe they were inappropriately used with our declarative data collections, we can still gain some performance improvement. And we have also uh, evaluated the flexibility of our library. Um, and we have also evaluated some factors that can influence the performance. For example, the input size of the data. We have also checked the implicit paralyze, parallelization as well as explicit parallelization. Um, for, uh, for the tested benchmarks programs, uh, most of the benchmarks can be parallelized but only some of them can uh, report its performance gain, which is good because we only replaced uh, those data structures with our declarative data collections. And, and um, here's the summary of my talk. Um, I think <laughs> so. Uh, for future work, we would like to port our uh, protocol library to other platforms such as GPUs, but still keep it as transparent as to the end users because we would like to keep the programmers uh, convenient to use our library. And we would, like, we would also like to do some dynamic adaption at runtime, for example, to swamp up the concrete data structure implementations at the runtime so we can have some opportunities to improve the performance. And uh, thank you very much for listening. You can scan the QR codes to reach me. And if you have some questions and discussions, welcome.
Thank you very much. Answer to that. Answer to that, I will give it to the... So if there are any que there are any questions, uh, oh I see. Okay. Thank you. This is fantastic work. I had two questions come up during your talk, and they were both from your future work. <laughs> so I guess just between the problem of going for finer grain parallelism for accelerators, or the problem of handling data structures that need dependent types like uh, matrix operations. Which of those problems do you think is more interesting? What are some of the ideas you're looking at, even if you don't have results yet? Hi. Hi. Um, uh, thank you for your question. May I ask, do you mean the type system for the protein? I'm sorry, I didn't um, hear you cl yeah, clearly. So the questions were, sorry, like uh, template metaprogramming, it's difficult to express dependent types. Mm -hmm. So if you have something like, like vector and matrix operations, you, you called that mm -hmm. out as future work. And then the question mm -hmm. of porting to accelerators, just of those which mm. you think are the interesting problems, what are you excited about? What are you looking at there? Thank you very much. That, that's a very good question because um, there are some works of runtime data structure swamping out or replacement, but um, most of the, those works are based on Java because for Java, it's, uh, it's much easier to do some runtime hacks, but for C++, it's not that easy. So I think for the future work, we, uh, we need to have to modify the campaigner. Uh, for ex example, do some work based on LLVM to uh, make it available. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one more question, if there are any. All right, so we are just in time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. One more round thank of applause. You.